another week, another episode of the Dateable Podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome. We are the Dateable Podcast, and we are here to talk about everything modern dating. And we get deep. We dig, dig, <laughs> dig. The topics just never run out, but I am excited about today's topic. Christine Emba, and she has a book called Rethinking Sex, which you probably have gathered given the title of this episode. And when we were reading this book, I mean, first of all, it was, you know, we always love sex topics and it's always interesting. <laughs> but what's fascinating about this is it goes beyond sex to more of just gender roles. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that we've been trying to, to or a lot of stuff we've been talking about for quite some time she was able to put a lot of good vocabulary around just how yes. feminism has changed what the landscape for women but maybe not in the way that we actually want like how many times have you talked to a friend that's like i just want a guy to freaking approach me in real life mm -hmm. and make the but make the first move yeah but we've made it that you know, you're a sexual harasser, you're it, like, it's too much to do that. So it's, it's a really fine line of get the progression, but also not having us be at a standstill. And that's kind of what's happened with modern dating. You know, it, we don't want to undermine the progress that we have made and you'll Absolutely hear it in this not. episode as well. <laughs> But with everything in life, there are consequences. And we are facing those consequences in sex right now. And we hope that this episode will shed more light on what is, well, like the confusion that you may be experiencing, you're not alone. And hopefully <laughs> it will inspire you to have more of these conversations. There's no solution, but we can be talking about this more openly. Yes, and one of our favorite terms undateable, relationship chicken. I feel like that has stemmed from this, that, you know, what we define as relationship chicken is when basically no one wants to show their cards. No one wants to make the move. Everyone says they want one thing when it comes to digging relationships and then do the exact opposite. Yeah. And, you know, that basically we always say, are you looking for a soulmate or a stalemate? Because all that gets mm -hmm. you is nothing. And I think that is kind of the consequence that's come from all this. Yeah, it's like we say things without thinking about it because it's like a knee-jerk reaction. We feel like we should say these things or it's just part of our system. And I think we're in a very interesting time right now where we are we are motivated um, or I guess maybe not motivated, but at least we are at a time where we can be inspired to pause and mm -hmm. think before we speak and to really get down to why do I even think this way, right? Uh, unraveling the systems that have built around us and we are built within and hopefully breaking free of all of that. Yeah. I mean, our society is just so go, go, go. I think that's mm. a big piece of it. And we don't think about that when it comes to dating, but it's every part of life, right? It's like there's this award if you're the busiest. And yeah. I think that makes us stop to think, like, what is it that we're actually doing? And what is it that we actually want? And we think we're actively doing all this stuff when we're just going through the motions. Well, same same with sex, right? It's like, yeah, people talk about sex like it's some sort of video game that they've unlock the next level. It's like, yeah, I'm just having a lot of sex and, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm fucking like a man, you know, like, you know, the whole sex in the city thing, or um, I'm trying to, you know, I don't get attached anymore after sex. We feel like we have to say these things to protect ourselves. Yeah. And it's, and for some reason we're bragging about that, but sex is part of our human connection and emotions. We, it's really hard to dissociate the two, but, but for some reason we've overcorrected to the other side of disassociating and just treating sex just as sex. Yeah, no, it's there's so much unraveling that we need to do as a society. And again, we don't want to, you know, the advancements that we've made, those should not be undermined at all. But it's almost like we've gone so extreme that we need to course correct. We put up mm. on Instagram a quote around being needy. I feel like for years you heard like that was the detriment to be needy. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when I was told not to be needy, all I did was hold it in. 
Like yes. I have the same needs. They didn't magically go away because I was told not yes. to be needy. I just held it in and then I got upset when someone wasn't a mind reader. And I feel like we've been taught like all this stuff to play it cool. And that's, I think the core of relationship chicken is you don't want to show your cards. You don't want to say that you're the one with the more feelings. But I think when you can get to a point that you're just like, fuck it, that's when like things start to click because who cares if someone thinks you're needy? Like if they're not meeting your needs, then like exactly. that's not who you want to be with. I, I used to preempt every sexual encounter by leaving their house early. Because oh, I didn't yeah. want to overstay my welcome and yes, come off as lady. Yes, cool. And then I would get home and just sit in my apartment alone and thinking, well, that would have been nice to like stay and cuddle. <laughs> but, you know, I had to protect myself. But thinking back, why couldn't I just openly say, I really prefer to hang out for a little bit after sex. Like it makes me feel good. And you know, just be more open about stating who I am and if. If you're on board with that, let's proceed. Yeah. And if you're not, then I'm going to leave. And you don't even know if they liked it. Like, they maybe wanted right. you to be there all day. I think it could even right. just be something as simple as, I'm having so much fun. Like, this has been so amazing. And then cuddling. Yeah. Like, like how? why would someone say, that's a terrible thing to say? Like, right. All you're saying right. is, I enjoy being with you. Like, why would that be something we need to hide when you think about it logically? Right. Exactly. And then on the flip side, I feel like there's so many people out there who've told me I I get so emotionally attached after sex that I have this no sex rule for the first oh, yes. three months or whatever, like this arbitrary rule. And now looking back on those conversations, you have to question why set those rules without the other person in mind? You're just setting these rules for yourself. They're really based on nothing instead of just communicating with the people you're yeah. interacting with and let them know what's going on. It's like depriving yourself of something that's so pleasurable. And then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I've definitely been yeah. here before that I'm like, I'm going to hold out. I'm not going to have sex right away. Yeah. And yeah. then they like end up, you know, ghosting or ending it. And then you're like, oh, dodged a bullet. But yeah. at the same time, like, did you dodge a bullet or were you just being right. like standoffish and someone could sense that energy that right. you're not really invested in this? I think if you had said like, hey, like I take sex seriously or this means a lot to me, I want to get to know you better, but like still give signs that you're interested in developing something. And by s signs, I mean saying it. Like, why are yeah. we so afraid to say stuff? We think that people like understand our Morse code that we're putting out there. <laughs> <laughs> that is what it feels like sometimes. That yeah. that truly is what it feels like sometimes. I, I would hold resentment. Like, how, how come this person didn't hear what I hear what I didn't say? <laughs> like, how did yeah. they not read my mind? <laughs> oh my God. I don't know why this made me think of it. But one time when I was on Match.com, this was years ago, I got an entire message in Morse code. Like it was sent, wow. like the entire message was sent that way. And then my friend got the same one. So same clearly message. Yeah. <laughs> it clearly wow. was a copy and paste. But like, what is, and it, you just don't even know how to respond to something like that. So it's the same with this. It's, you're not giving anyone <laughs> anything to go off of. Oh my gosh, that's so <laughs> Weird. <laughs> we are so weird with communication. Why? We are. I really wish, you know, I feel like we talk about being vulnerable. It's such a buzzword, right? Be vulnerable. And I think people take it to be, let me disclose all my deep, dark secrets and trauma dump on this person mm -hmm. and have a therapy session with my date. And that is not what being vulnerable means. Like, no. I think just have it like saying that you're having a good time like it seems so simple yet it's so difficult for so many of us to do and i was there for years like i never i remember i had a friend that was married and mm -hmm. he was like oh like did you text him and say you had a good time and i'm like i would never no, no. do that no way. i'm like this yeah. guy's so clueless he's married he's out of the game and then looking back at it i'm like of course the guy went with out with would want to hear that. Like, why wouldn't yes. someone want to hear that? And you're not being needy. You're just being 
normal. <laughs> like you're just common courtesy. Tell like, yeah, it's so weird. Like, why does dating? And this kind of reminds me of like the lowest common denominator episode we did a few weeks ago. Why are there so many like arbitrary rules and ways mm -hmm. of being and dating that don't apply to anything else in life? Like, if you met up with like a colleague. Of course you would text them the next day or email them and be like, it was really great to meet you. If you didn't, right. it would be freaking rude. <laughs> right. I truly believe 90% of the stress we face in dating is from the non-communication. It's the yeah. stories we make up during the periods of non-communication. I still remember like really liking this guy seeing him and asking if you want to hang out the next Wednesday. And he's like, I'm busy next Wednesday. How about Thursday? Instead of asking, oh, what are you doing Wednesday? I made up this story in my mind that he's going on another date. And he was seeing all these other people. And he was having this like party life. And later to find out his, from his friends that he was visiting his parents. Uh, like, why? <laughs> why did I even put myself through that? I could have just simply asked, oh, what are you doing? Yeah, you and to. that's like how you for like if you had a friend that was away, you would just be like, "Oh, what's going on?" Yeah, what's going on? You wouldn't where be are like, you, "Where are you headed?" Oh my god, they're hanging out with another friend, <laughs> cheating on <laughs> they me. Have yeah. Other friends, they have another life outside <laughs> how of me. Dare they? <laughs> how it's so rude. weird. <laughs> I think yeah. we obviously need to rethink sex. Hence the title of this episode. We need to rethink all of dating, all of it, the all entire it. gamut of. Love, dating, relationship, sex, all of it needs to be rethought, <laughs> rethink, rethought, I think rethought. Re <laughs> Ugh, it needs a facelift. <laughs> it needs serious needs Botox. Yeah. Or maybe not even Botox. Botox is just like Band-Aid solution. That's we true. That's true. full facelift. Yeah. Like a whole new face. <laughs> yeah. It's like cannot look the same anymore or similar. It's just we need we need to... It's an upheaval. Like we need to change everything, but we're yeah. we're slowly getting there. How are we getting there? One is you're listening to this podcast, and this yep, is something we're very go. passionate about. <laughs> Please join the movement because we can't keep dating yes. like this. If we keep dating like this, we're all going to end up in dating hell, and you're going to end up hating everyone <laughs> and not wanting to be in relationships or communicate or connect with other human beings. So please come on board this movement. This is step mm -hmm. number one. But step number two, I realize this is a major light bulb moment for me this this past week. I was kind of like being judgy on some of my friends' relationships. And sometimes mm. I get in like this mode of like, my friends can do so much better. You know, I, I mm. really think they deserve better people in their lives. And I realized I was being judgy because I needed to reflect on my own relationship. Whenever I comment on other people's lives, it's a reflection oh, yes. of what I am experiencing in my own life. So same thing with dating. If you are commenting about bad dating behavior, bad dating culture, look to yourself first and see if you have been part of that because I certainly realized that this week is like, oh, I'm commenting on other people's relationships because I'm not r working on the problems in my own relationship. Like, oh who am God. I to judge you other just, people's? I just had like the exact epiphany as you said it. And it took me until <laughs> you say that, that I've been doing the exact same thing. <laughs> and that's the easy thing is to comment on external yeah. things right other people yeah i'm above it all i still remember when i went to group uh relationship therapy with my ex and the first it was two weekends right and i remember telling you this julie like the first weekend we're like we have no problems compared to these people <laughs> they've got, got big problems they all have issues and then by the second weekend we broke up <laughs> that's how it goes You're like ours are so bad we don't even know them yeah 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 <laughs> yeah it's a fucking tsunami of issues <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> I think, you know, that is that rings just too true. I feel like that is everything in life. It all comes back to us. And that's the hardest person. It's the hardest mm -hmm. thing to face is yourself. But ultimately, that's the change. Like, that's the only yeah. real change. And I think it's easy to blame all this other stuff and to look down on people and all the external. But the hard work really does come from looking within. It does. It does. 
and we're going to do Which that. Which is why people avoid it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, before we get into this episode, at Datable Podcast, that's our Instagram. We've been, you know, experimenting with more video content. We're putting mm-hmm. up all sorts of things lately. We have a mission. If you want to get on this movement, make sure you're following us there too, because I was thinking about this, that a lot of times, you know, we say all this stuff on the podcast and clearly that's a great way to, you know, bring it up. But I feel like sometimes seeing something written that's like Mm -hmm. bite size, it just drives it home. So even if, you know, you've maybe heard something a couple times, whether it's from this podcast or the myriad of other dating sources out there but sometimes just seeing it that one more time said a different way will be like yep that's exactly what i need kind of like what ua just did to me right now (laughs) with that so definitely follow us at dateable podcast loving the time of corona i feel like you know my heart has been warm this week we've seen so many people traveling and just being like up in london yeah like who's in here, whatever location you're at, like this has happened a couple times now, and what a great way for people to connect. I also was like very heartwarmed that someone wrote about a relationship that you know that they just got into, and they talked about like the values that they were looking of how they wanted to feel, and that this mm-hmm. person checked it off. And someone was like, "Oh, can I share this in another group?" And they were like. I prefer not to because this is the group of the people that's kind of been with me along this journey. And I'm not really like trying to put this on the internet. Like I'm trying to share it with this group. So yeah. really tight knit group. We still have the sounding board. UA and I go once a month, but also the, t- the group meets pretty much weekly on the weekly sound offs. And mm-hmm. we have a phenomenal host team. If you're feeling alone in dating, let's say all your friends are coupled off. They just don't get what you're going through. These are the people that got your back. So you can always join datablepodcast.com slash sounding board. 